How much can you borrow with an FHA loan? Watch this video and give me a call. Hey, this is Chris Trapani, The Mortgage Pro. You know, people ask me all the time with an FHA loan, Chris, how much loan can I qualify for? How much can I borrow? Well, it depends on a number of factors and I'm going to go over a whole bunch of them right now. Okay, we're going to start with debt to income ratio. Here's how it works. There's two debt to income ratios that we have to worry about with an FHA loan. The first one is the payment. We call it the front end. It's the first one. So the payment can be no more than 47% of your total income. So for even number purposes, and just to make it a little easier to calculate, let's say you make $10,000 a month. That means that 47% up to $4,700 can be a house payment. Now we have a back end ratio. That's also the total house payment. And when I say total house payment, what I'm referring to here is principal, interest, taxes, insurance, and if you're in a condominium or an association, you pay an association fee, that has to be included too. 47%, now we're gonna look at the back end. Take that 47%, that full payment that you have, and now we're going to add on your car payments, student loans, credit cards, child support, alimony, any of these type of things. That, as a total, can't be more than 57% of your total income. All right, now we need to calculate your income. Everything we're going to talk about is before taxes are taken out when it comes to a job. There's a few tricks and a few tips we're going to talk about with other things for perhaps tax-free income. But assuming you make $5,000 a month as a salary, that's it. There's no calculation necessary. But most people actually don't get paid that way. Most people get paid hourly. Let's say you make $20 an hour. We're going to calculate, do you work 40 hours a week or do you work 37.2 hours a week, because a lot of people do that. They don't work the full 40 hours, and some people work 60 hours a week, so we're gonna have to calculate overtime. But let's just assume you're working 40 hours a week to start. We start there, we're gonna take $20 an hour, we'll say, at 40 hours. That's $800 a week. Now, a lot of people are gonna say 800 times four, four paychecks a month, it actually does not work that way, because four times a year, you're actually gonna get an extra paycheck. So here's how it's gonna work. You're gonna take that $800, multiply it by 52 weeks, and divide it by 12, and that's the actual income. So we're gonna show you some formulas, and we're gonna work with that. But I'm gonna teach you a little trick here that nobody seems to know. Take your hourly salary, if it's $20 an hour, and if you work 40 hours a week, just multiply by 173.333, you get the same exact number. For all you mortgage professionals and real estate professionals out there, I just taught you something. A lot of people who work hourly also work overtime. How it works is we're going to take a two-year average of your overtime. And a lot of people say, well, I don't know exactly how much I make, you know, over time, you know, it changes from week to week and month to month. Well, here's what happens. We require a verification of employment. We are going to send your business, your company, a form to be filled out. It's a standard form. And it asks them, how much did you make in 2016 for overtime? How much did you make in 2017 for overtime? How much have you made so far in 2018 for overtime? And we're going to average that out because sometimes people go into a very busy season, maybe come Christmas time or maybe the summertime is super busy, but you don't work overtime in the beginning of the year. This way we average it out so nobody gets short changed and we don't give you too much overtime and credit for that either. Bonuses. We all like bonuses. We're going to average those too. We're going to average that over two years. If you get a commission, a lot of people, salespeople, are, their salaries and their incomes are commission driven. We're going to take a look at two years commission and we are going to average it out. That's how we're going to figure out the gross. Now that's how we figure out your income. It's the same exact thing for your spouse. And we'll total the two together and then we're going to start working with the 47% and 57% debt ratios. Okay, I promised I was going to talk to you about tax-free income. What is tax-free income? Well, there's a number of different things. Child support is tax-free income. Sometimes people get uh, are forced to parents and they get checks from the state or whatnot. Uh, veterans, 
Veterans often receive income from disability. That is tax-free income. Some people receive Social Security disability or maybe even Social Security, but they don't have enough other income to have to pay taxes on it. We take this, we understand because you don't pay taxes, it's actually worth more. So what we do is on an FHA loan, we add 15% of it. What does that mean? If you get $1,000 a month tax-free, I get to add 15%. It looks like $1,150. We're going to add that to your income. Now, what else is super important to calculate how much home you can qualify for? Well, we're going to look at your credit score. Why your credit score? Well, if you have over a 580 FICO score, we're usually going to be able to go up to that 57% debt ratio and 47% front end. Sometimes it requires a 620. It all depends on how well you've taken care of your credit or not. Now, if you are below a 580 FICO score, we're going to be looking at a much lower debt ratio. If we can't get a standard approval by going to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac's website, we're looking at a 41 or 43% debt ratio, depending on the circumstance. So we have to look at these things as a whole. Don't give up. If your credit score is low, we could work with that. We'll figure that out. We'll get you over the top to help you fire your landlord. But we have to work within the confines of the government requirement that FHA puts on us. Now, what is the payment? Well, we have to calculate it based on today's interest rate. The interest rate changes daily. It goes up a fraction or it goes down a fraction. It changes daily. We have to look at your t property taxes based on the purchase price. We have to look at your total payment. How much is the homeowner's insurance? PMI, mortgage insurance. We have to pay on an FHA loan. It's actually MIP. We have to include those things in the payment so we can figure it out. Now, it sounds like a really simple thing to do. It doesn't take long. All we need is a few documents from you. You can go to christhemortgagepro.com, fill out the application. It takes you five to ten minutes, and I'll figure it out exactly. Right now, I'm giving you this video so you have an estimate. But we have to end the guessing, start the knowing, so we can fire your landlord. Sometimes, People are just a little short on income and they say, what do I do? Do I have to really downgrade my house that much? Well, what about a non-occupying co-borrower? What's that? Well, maybe your brother, sister, cousin Charlie, mom, dad. They have good income with not a lot of debt. And what we do is we add their income onto yours. Now, we obviously have to add their debts too. They are just as legally responsible as you are for the loan. But very often it can help you go over the top and buy your own home. Hey, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to get started today, stop procrastinating. Either call me up 310-350-2546 or go to the website right here. You'll see it, fireyourlandlord.info. Click on the apply now button. We'll get you started. We're going to fire your landlord.